concludes the presentations we have for today. You know, we start tomorrow morning at 8.30, same time. Our first presentation is actually at 8.45, but please be here at 8.30. And it is H3S. So if you um, haven't read all of their information, you know, tonight would be a good time for some, you know, going to bed, going to sleep type homework, you know, that type of thing. And if you have any any blatant questions that come from that, just jot them down and, and we'll get to them. But if there's if there's nothing else for today, I will adjourn to the Chair meeting Parker, until tomorrow. Or am I recessing it? Uh, we have Tom Feely has his hand up. Oh, who did? Mr. Feely. Oh, Tom. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'll be very brief. We had next steps down, so. What, what I was thinking it'd be very helpful to get from Gary and Elizabeth are, what are the next steps? Like, where do we go from here? We've heard from so many people already that, you know, there are imminent cuts coming down from the state. And, you know, we talked about maybe property tax delinquencies going up. Just be nice to see, like, on a schedule, maybe when we might be back looking at the budget. I know we don't know what other people are going to do, but we know that we're going to have to act quickly. And then the well, other it, thing. Yeah, it would seem too that some of the unknown in that is what's going to happen with COVID over the next two or three months right. and what that, what that brings. We could, quite frankly, we could be all totally shut down again, just like we've been for the last three months. If, yeah. If, I, just, uh, I just know from past experience, we, we just can't wait for everything. No, we can't. The longer That's we true. wait, the more you have to cut. So yeah. The other yeah. thing I was going to request, I know in Gary's message, he's got a list of the general fund cuts, but it would be possible to get all the departments cuts on a chart, like general fund in one column, like state revenue in another, and other in a third column, something like that. Are you bill, uh, this budget is not going to be just the general fund, obviously. I mean, yeah. we'd be hearing that. Are you asking if they could get that type of information together by tomorrow or by Friday morning, Friday morning or later on? Uh, yeah. Before we that same question. approve the budget. Before we finish? Yeah, I don't think we need it tomorrow because it's all Right, because I think that would be extremely difficult yeah, to do. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. ask that. Yeah, and then also, I hope everybody has on their calendar that we do have the public hearings tomorrow night. Tomorrow so. Night that we have a, I think it's 45 minutes or whatever break, but then 5.30, I believe it is, we start in with that, so, yeah. Okay, other comments, questions, thoughts? Commissioner Savas, Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, um, I, Tom, I appreciate your words there. Um, I think you said, um, the longer we wait, uh, the harder those cuts will be in the future, or something to that effect. and. I guess that is my concern after listening to the presentations today and keeping in mind that I was hoping to see some of the um, impacts through attrition that might happen as a, as a result of the hiring freeze. I'm not really seeing much of that at all, frankly. And I thought we would, that would be kind of revealed in some of the responses um, but it seems to me that maybe um, that the hiring freeze didn't really have a net effect. I can definitely see where the contingencies were rolled over into general fund to help kind of backfill. Um, and so, um, and obviously the unfilled positions not being filled, um, which is, again, but that doesn't change the size of the hole in the boat. We're still taking on water. Um, and that's my concern. And I just think it's, um, you know, I'm just reflecting back to 20 years ago when I um, got on a particular utility and uh, they were in deep, they were in, they were not in good, good financial condition whatsoever. And we had to do a number of significant things um, and they were all painful. Every one of them was painful. And um, it feels like that's today. Like everything we have to do here is, is painful. None of it's gonna be easy. And, the, and I agree, the longer we wait, the more painful it is. So um, one thing I learned out of the utility thing uh, that my utility role of elected official um, is, is that a lot of people echoing 
um, the longer you stall, the more painful it is. And, um, and that shock is something that will reverberate to your constituents for a long time. And I think that's why it's imperative that we take some steps. Um, and I don't know what we do. I don't know that we did anything today constructively to um, shape or, or change or adjust. I think we got a lot of information. And again, my realization that um, it, it, I, I'm not seeing a lot of the, of the um, structural cuts um, that I thought maybe had been taking place. And again, attrition is what I was, I was hoping for and maybe things along the lines of either projects or materials and services or things like that, that were, um, uh, that, that were sizable enough to make the difference. So I'm, I'm actually gonna have to really roll this over. I'm not sure how well I'll sleep tonight, but I'm actually more worried than I was when I woke up this morning. Commissioner Schrader. Thanks for that. I, I do think there's a hole in the boat. I just want to caution folks that if we fund the sheriff to the full amount, we will have to make cuts in other programs. Um, that's become evident, and I don't know where their cuts are, would come from at this point. But um, if, if we're going to prioritize public safety as the main piece of what we do, it's, it's not sustainable right now with what our sheriff, and I'm a big public safety supporter, but um, I think we're really going to have to think long and hard if that's the path we're going to take where cuts will come from. It's just, just thought I'd share that with you. This is not fun. This is probably the worst um, scenario I've ever been through. So anyway, thanks and sleep well anyway tonight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mr. Bernard? Um, you know that we, I don't know if you know this, we're not even halfway through this COVID adventure. Right. My understanding is this. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm retiring at the end of the year. The people at the county who are visiting our retirement person is a ton of them. There are going to be people who aren't going to go back to work because they're afraid to go to work. You cannot make cuts at this time until we hear from the state and until we feel more comfort in what's gonna happen there. And I disagree that, you know, you pull the Band-Aid off carefully. You don't just jerk it off and get rid of, destroy the budget. I We have Elizabeth sitting up here in, the, in my computer screen on the left. I trust that she knows what she's doing. And I know, Paul, you trust her too. And she says we can get through this. And I'm comfortable in standing behind Gary and her and our finance department in holding the line. Because next year, you're going to have somebody here who's going to want to cut the hell out of the budget. And it's going to be a lot more painful. And it's not going to be... It's not going to be like surgery. It's going to be something like you hear all the time. 15% off everybody's budget. And that is not the way you run government. That is not the way you, you save lives. I don't, you know, I the sheriff is a tough one. His budget's gone up every year since I've been here. He used to say it was some, something around 70 or 78% of the county's budget. Well, we cannot possibly fund him at his desired uh, funding level. We have to do what works, not what it should be, what he thinks it should be or anybody else thinks it should be. So be very, very careful. And, I'm, you know, we don't know about COVID yet. And my guess is we're going to have a lot of people leaving the county from fear of ever going back to work again. That's my understanding is happening everywhere. Multnomah County, you know, I, I talk to Multnomah County and Washington County three times a week. And Multnomah County says their people are afraid to go to work. 
and she's not sure what they're going to do to get them back in there. And if you look at what city of Portland's doing, uh, you know, the, probably half their staff will never sit foot in a city building again, never. So we've got something to really think about in the future. So that's all I got to say. It's been a lot of fun. Can we? Yes, I think where we are now, the budget that's before us is probably where we have to stand because we don't know what's going to happen after this. I think with the state cuts, there's going to be some more pain to come and there'll have to be a supplemental budget. We probably can't do much more with the budget that's presented to us, except live with it until we know the rest of reality. Thank you, Jan. Commissioner Humberston. Yes. Um, Elizabeth, my understanding is in this budget, we've cut about six and a half million dollars and that you anticipate over the next couple of years, uh, small, like two to 3% cuts going forward. Um, we are anticipating the possibility of additional retirements uh, that could help us. Um, so I'm inclined to, to uh, support you going forward in, in how you are managing this budget until such time as we have a clear picture of what the state and federal government's uh, revenues are going to be to us. Um, it's not, it's not ideal, but I don't want to just take a meat cleaver and cut off something only to find out that later on uh, we did get some funding that would allow us to, to keep a, a program going at least, even if it was at a smaller scale. So um, I think this is one where we live with the idea that we're going to periodically uh, be reviewing this budget mm -hmm. based on income that comes in and making changes at that point in time. And finally, I would like to point out to the people that are watching this that um, you and Gary have worked on with our uh, labor union folks on the subject of furloughs, if necessary. So going forward, uh, another way we may be able to cut the budget, if we have to do so, will be furloughs uh, in the different departments uh, that will give us salary savings. Uh, but until we have the data coming in on income, what we need to do is just plan for those different scenarios so that when the time comes, we can activate the, the most appropriate scenario to, to match the funding cut that we may be dealing with. Does that make sense to you, uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Savas. Uh, Elizabeth, earlier this morning, I asked you what the um, funding gap is um, last week it was like nine you mentioned about nine million dollars what we were you know short to make have a sustainable budget is, is that still is that number still accurate well and like we talked about earlier today it is a moving target uh, i did a lot of work on the um forecast over the last a few days working with blaze on putting in assumptions, you know, we had uh, a marker for a place marker for the equity pay. Well, I went ahead and put some figures in there. We have some better estimates on the library uh, loan that we're going to need to take out in um, 18 to 24 months. And, and so every time we make adjustments and look at our delinquency and our you know, projections for property taxes, because uh, we are looking at um, what happened after 2009. Everything changes, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a moving target. And what we're, what we're doing with this year's budget that we have presented, this balanced budget, is a launching pad. Um, like Jan Lee was saying, you know, this is a place to start uh, as we get additional information we're going to be meeting monthly, we can make these changes, not wait till Christmas. But, you know, as we go into July, what, what do we know now? What, what is the state going to, um, you know, inform us of our incoming revenues? Um, uh, and the, the, the cuts that we're talking about, sure, we did make a reduction of 6.1 
a million dollars uh, to reduce the take into the general fund, um, still with a balanced budget. And the other departments, what they've done is they revisited their projections for this year end. So they made those reductions. Some of the departments you already heard about that, how they've adjusted their year to date figures and they've carried that into the next year in their, their projections uh, in their proposed budget. So those aren't exactly, you know, the cuts that we've done for general fund. What they've done is they've looked at the funding levels that they are aware of right now and have already adjusted how their expenses are, are going to play out. But as they get new information, they'll be tweaking those as that information becomes available. So this budget is not static. It is a launching pad to get us to the new year, to get us to where we can make future adjustments as new information becomes available. Well, I, I, I appreciate, appreciate that, um, Elizabeth. I guess what my concern is, is that, and I hope my colleague, uh, uh, Jim is listening, um, uh, but that I, what I'm seeing today, the budgets that we went through today, and tomorrow's another day, and, and it's a different set of budgets, but I, what I've seen thus far, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier as best I can. I, I, I am not seeing the budget, not the budget, but the hiring freeze impacts. I see a lot of rehiring, so I don't see where that thus far, where that took place. Had we had, had we not filled those positions, maybe we wouldn't be, and maybe it would be more promising, but I haven't seen that. I've heard a lot of people say we filled them, we filled them, okay? So we, I haven't seen that. Number two, we're cutting unfilled positions that, that we have historically have had. That's not a real cut, okay? The other thing is we're, we're, we're taking the contingency and we've had contingency that's been carrying over. And I understand that. That's not a real cut either. It might total 6.1 be part of, 6.1 million, but I'm looking for, and maybe tomorrow or the next day or Friday could be the time, but I want to, not that I want to see the cuts, we just got to do it somewhere, but, but I'm just concerned that we haven't, I haven't seen those impacts. I haven't seen the real cuts. And so I'm just worried about the messaging out there saying we, we've cut 6.1 million and we haven't cut real money. We've cut vacant positions we've historically mm -hmm. had. We have cut contingencies we've historically have and that that's not those aren't real cuts and lee so seeing i'm on the budget committee i'm hearing a lot about budget cut to get to sustainable budget and that's one of the options i just wonder has the county considered looking at other revenue sources maybe looking for more grant or funding opportunities or partnering with other government agencies to reduce the operating cost, just increase the revenue. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try that. Yes, we, of course, look at what other possibilities are. We're, we're limited, of course, with property taxes. It's very difficult to raise the property tax rate, if not impossible. Uh, we have looked at how we can um, condense services, perhaps, uh, with other organizations, other governments. So yes, we, we've looked at those opportunities. The, the savings does not appear to be, or the, the income streams do not appear to be enough to do the, the tough decisions we need to make right now. But yes, okay. we have, and we will continue to look at the other possible revenue increased revenue streams. Thank you. Sean Coldwell. Thank you. I guess everybody's gonna make a statement, so I'll make a statement. Um, when I was at Multnomah County, the last 10 years of my career, we went through 10 years of cuts. Um, some years, eight to 12% of general fund. So this is not something I haven't seen before or couldn't possibly face because I have faced it and it's tough. And a lot of programs went away that were helping people and were very successful. I guess my discomfort with what I've seen so far um, in this budget process is a lack of focus towards the five board priorities. I don't know how the decisions came um, that help retain and are most effective towards getting to 
you know, I'm talking about grow a vibrant community, build a strong infrastructure, et cetera. Those, those five things which are such good values and such good goals um, that I think as, as we're making reductions, um, that has to continue to be the focus. I know Gary talked this morning about an equitable process. I have no idea what that means. I've seen what looks to me like a constraint process, which is basically, you know, everybody turn in X percentage and, you know, we'll either take more cuts or put more back, but without really taking that overall view of not just general fund, but what's going on with the other funds, what are the system impacts, what are the populations that can be helped and what are the populations that can't be helped. It's just a bigger vision than what I've seen so far. And so far, this makes me uncomfortable to go in and, and make big cuts. Um, I don't know how they're fitting in with the total vision. Commissioner Bernard. Um, there's an old saying, uh, uh, Ann Lee, uh, uh, that to make money, you have to spend money. And, you know, one thing we're looking at to raise money is a utility, uh, high-speed internet utility. But it costs a lot of money to do that. And so we're trying to grow it. And with that, if we can get a grant from the federal government, there's an opportunity there to create our own high-speed internet utility. That's one thing we're looking at. But, you know, I guess, uh, Sean, uh, when, when you're, you know you're going to have cuts, you go to the folks and you say, give me 18%. And so the theory is they look within their organization and determine for themselves and to tell us what they can cut what's valuable i guess because you obviously if somebody has a department that has a lot of successful programs they're going to look at the ones that are least successful that's the theory and then after they give us that information then gary and other folks determine is that what works i mean is that what we want to do so it's always a challenge to do that uh, but you know the, the 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 future is so unsure for everything we're going to do uh, right now with you know uh, when I was on the phone with the governor the other day and Paul had an idea that we should get about 72 million dollars of that cares money and the governor uh, unlike uh, uh, most states, determined that they should keep the money and that we should be billing them for it. And that that is, uh, is not helpful. Uh, we should have that money and not have to worry about it. But, you know, I think that to, to suggest that not filling positions is not a cut, the positions have been eliminated. So that's a cut. Uh, but I think Paul's right. Let's, Gary, if you can by Friday, get us, just show us the number of positions that have been eliminated and where, I guess. That would be helpful because that sh that'll show us a lot. And I know there's a lot and it saved us a lot of money. Uh, and then what, what Ken mentioned, we met with the unions and talked about and their meeting to tell us whether they would accept a furlough. Yeah, that is something we have to negotiate with the unions, by the way. Uh, so it's not just something we can do. But if, they, if they're willing to furlough once a month for all of us, including commissioners maybe, not get paid for one day a month, we can save, I believe it was somewhere around five million, Gary. Shake your head yes, or was it yes. five point yeah. two million? Five point two million. And that's significant. Uh, if we did that and we did that for a, a year and maybe two years, we could fill this gap. 
assuming we knew what the state was going to do, but we don't know that. So anyway, I spoke enough. <laughs> Thanks. Commissioner Fisher. Thanks. So I just wanted to respond to what Ann had said. Did we look at other revenue? You'll hear tomorrow about from H3S and we did, I participated, Chair Bernard participated, the board was kept informed of for homeless services. We worked with the region to look at getting resources in order to help that for one of our key strategic priorities. And so we did work, have a concerted effort on there. We did succeed in getting those revenues. So that's one area that we will be able to move the dial on successfully. There's also been talk, and it's just been in conversations, but there has been some studies about creating a law enforcement district countywide. And the thought there would be, would that be sustain more sustainable instead of the sheriff going out for a five-year levy? Those kinds of things. I know that as Angela Brandenburg was running for sheriff, we um, talked about really looking at that and seeing if that would be a more sustainable funding source for the sheriff. And so we do. We are having these conversations. Always welcome ideas on how to grow the, the for the services we know we absolutely need because general fund is oh so limited. But I also see this whole COVID situation as a reordering of things. It's a natural thing that will happen based on what is most important. And it's a huge opportunity for us to shed through our government what isn't, doesn't, things that might be going on that don't need to happen because they're not as relevant in this new climate. That's happening, it will continue to happen and our budget will evolve through this time, maybe not in the next few days, but definitely as we go, get into and look at our supplemental budgets and how we are dealing with the CARES dollars and the FEMA dollars and the disaster dollars and how that all plays down and where the cuts are going to come from the state. It's just a reordering of things to focus on what's most important. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, just just real quick, Gary. Um, you know, Jim's mentioned this a couple times about the one one day a month furlough, and as we discussed it the last time, I thought we realized that a lot of the funding streams would be unnecessarily, it wouldn't be necessarily beneficial to rate based things like Wes and others and so on. So maybe there could be a breakdown of what how the general fund, which is where we're really hurting. Um, what what that would actually do? It's not five million to the general fund where we need it. Um, it's much less. So maybe we can have a breakdown of what that would look like across the funding streams, so that not only are we informed, but the people that are listening to this are also informed. Thank you. Keep in mind, if you furlough deputy sheriffs and corrections officers, somebody's going to have to fill behind them too. Yeah. So be, I would be careful about counting that. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me too like we have some basis for really good conversation on Friday morning, and we still have you know about half of our departments that need to go through their budget presentations tomorrow, especially H3S. Almost all morning we're with H3S, so we'll give that some good focus, and I expect there'll be some good questions out of that. Given all of that, if there are no other comments, and I do not see any. I would adjourn today's meeting until 8.30 tomorrow morning.